There are countless dungeons in WoW's history, however one dungeon stands out as unique compared to the rest in just how massive it is, that is Blackrock Depths. This dungeon came out in Classic WoW and it puts full raids to shame with having over 30 bosses in this one dungeon instance. This dungeon reportedly took some players over 5 hours to complete back in original vanilla WoW. Despite this dungeon being so daunting, there dropped so many unique and really powerful pieces of loot. So in this video I will be taking a look at this bizarre mega dungeon that Blizzard crafted and its interesting details. By the way, if you want an excellent in-game leveling guide, I highly recommend you guys get Cygore Guides. It's compatible with Classic WoW, Season of Discovery and the upcoming Cataclysm Classic. You can get it by clicking the link in the description and use code VOLTY to get 20% off. It's worth mentioning that Blackrock Depths probably has one of the coolest entrances to a dungeon portal of all time. There is this massive rock that is held together by these statues of dwarves holding chains above a sea of lava and going across one of these giant chains you go down into the depths. What a cool entrance to a dungeon portal. Now Blackrock Depths is essentially the home of the Dark Iron Dwarves, or more specifically Shadowforge City. Now the Dark Iron Dwarves are essentially enslaved by Ragnaros, and it's fair to say that the Dark Iron Dwarves are pretty dark. Throughout the prison wing in Blackrock Depths, you can see various people that are captured and tortured by the Dark Iron Dwarves. And the ambient sound in this place, you can hear people wailing in pain. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Now you may be thinking, how could a single dungeon portal have 30 bosses? Although this dungeon was absolutely huge, due to the nature of this dungeon having branching paths, different sections were typically ran by groups and not the entire dungeon. There's quite a lot of different paths you can take and things to do in Blackrock Depths, which is actually something that adds to the charm of this place. A lot of dungeons in Vanilla WoW are actually separated in different wings. Scarlet Monastery, Dire Maul are good examples of this. However, Blizzard decided to do something different here and have one dungeon to rule them all. One of the more popular reasons people went into BRD was to do something called arena runs. This was a arena, a gladiatorial arena, where an audience of dark and wolves are watching you essentially fight to the death with various monsters that come out and fight you. Arena runs were quite unique in that it's pure RNG as to what final boss you get at the end, and some bosses are more sought after than others, giving some pre-raid best in slot items and some giving junk. There was some really nice stuff that you could get from arena runs, such as the Savage Gladiator Chain, and also the Banfox Sash, which gave Spellcaster DPS a chance to hit on spells, by far the most important stat to prioritize for them. And this is something that is quite interesting with BRD, is just the quality of loot here is really really high. If you look at any vanilla WoW pre-raid best in slot list for any given class, a huge amount of the drops will come from BRD. There are some standout pieces like Force of Will that tanks used throughout the majority of vanilla WoW, Hand of Justice, a unique trinket that gave melee DPS a chance to do a double hit, and Iron Foe, one of the most unique items in WoW history, a one-handed mace that had a chance of doing two extra swings on a strike. So because the loot in BRD was so good, a lot of people came to this dungeon despite its size. One of the cool things that you may not realize when you first get into BRD is that you're actually entering into a city. The scale of BRD is absolutely massive, and technically this is Shadowforge City, which is where the Dark Iron Dwarves call their home. It really does feel like a city. As you're traversing through BRD, you get to see just how big this place and get a sense of the insane scale that this dungeon is operating on. Like it really does feel like you're entering a hostile city and you're storming the place. And I got to think that Blizzard took some inspiration from D&D campaigns. The way this dungeon is set up is so unlike dungeons that we know of today. The modern sensibilities of a WoW dungeon are not here. It's very sprawling and has multiple paths and interesting things to do, but it's really quite amazing that Vanilla WoW came with this dungeon. An interesting thing with BRD is that you can collect some keys after killing Dark Iron Dwarves, and you can even find a vault section where there are various lockers 
holding some treasure that you can pick up that sold for quite a lot of silver and some other rare items you can get. And you can definitely see that Blizzard were inspired by Dungeons and Dragons during this era of WoW. The Dark Kind Wolves aren't just ready for combat all the time. There's actually a location called the Grim Guzzler Inn, where you see a bunch of non-hostile Dark Kind Dwarves just drinking and having a good time. Now, Shadowforge City is the main attraction, however, it's so extensive and it's built into this volcanic mountain that there's a branching path where you can go into this lava section, and this is essentially a huge lake of lava that is inbuilt into the mountain that can be used as a shortcut to get to the later sections of BRD. However, you have to deal with a bunch of molten lava that has a decent chance of killing you. And something truly unique about this place is that there is actually a portal within BRD. Famously, the entrance to Molten Core is in BRD. You would discover this as you do the Molten Core attunement quest to gain access to the first real raid in WoW. But I just find it so fascinating that Blizzard put a raid portal in a dungeon portal. That's how expansive BRD is. Technically, Molten Core is part of BRD. Another cool piece of flavor in BRD is the Black Forge and Anvil. Now, the Black Forge is the place where you can craft dark iron bars, and the Dark Anvil is where you can craft dark iron equipment, including the Sulfur and Hammer. Now, the Sulfur and Hammer is basically the diet version of Sulfurus, the legendary mace. But to craft the Sulfur and Hammer required an absolute ton of resources that cost a lot of gold. However, you could craft it only in BRD if you go to the Black Anvil. And many players that have the Eye of Sulfurus to combine with the Sulfur and Hammer would finally get the legendary weapon. And what a cool place to get this weapon. Like, it's so memorable and flavorful that it really must be a special feeling to actually get Sulphurus in this really cool looking room. I've had a lot of positive things to say about BRD and I actually love this dungeon. However, there is one thing that is quite questionable in design and that is the Flamekeeper room. As you near the end of BRD, you get to this room where there are a bunch of these non-elite dwarves running around, and they're quite a pain to deal with. They do ranged attacks, and there's so many of them littered throughout this room. They also have a really short respawn window. Essentially, players that come here would have to keep moving no matter what, otherwise they would just get flooded by these dwarves. You actually have to find these Flamekeeper NPCs, kill them, take their torch, and light the two braziers to open the door to go further into BRD. It's a bit of a frustrating room to deal with, but it doesn't last too long. Now it's fair to say that BRD has quite a lot of unique things going for it, compared to many of the other dungeons in WoW. And one of the interesting things about this place is you can actually get different loot depending on which of the two final bosses you kill first. The final boss is Emperor Forison and his wife Moira. Now depending on if you kill Forison or Moira first, you will get totally different loot. First of all, I think that's a really cool mechanic, especially in this period of time. But also, it gives you a loot table that you can choose from, meaning if nobody needs anything from Forison, you may as well kill Moira first, and maybe one of your party members can get something useful from her. It does seem like Blizzard tried a lot of different mechanics and interesting things to throw at the wall and see what sticks in this dungeon. In general, I think BRD is quite fondly remembered. If you like this video, the YouTube algorithm thinks you'll like the video on screen here, so check it out.